So I'm Jeff DeBelko of the Woodrow Wilson Center's Environmental Change and Security Program in Copenhagen, uh, talking about climate change and security with Ollie Brown from the International Institute for Sustainable Development. Uh, Ollie presented a couple of the papers that IISD has done on climate change and the prospects for conflict here in Copenhagen to a Ministry of Defense meeting. But in fact, Ollie, I want to ask you about the broader set of work that IISD is doing. Uh, often in conjunction and with the UN Environment Program and some of their post-conflict work, um, can you tell me about uh, the various projects that IISD is working on? So it's a set of topics that you guys have been active in for many years now. Um, and it'd be helpful to have a, a lay of the land in what you're working on. Sure. Well, I mean, I think we've done a lot of work uh, in kind of academically to try and understand the links between environmental change and security, natural resources, the illegal trade in, in timber, blood diamonds and so on, and how that can play a role in civil conflict and, and conflict between communities in different countries. And the challenge for us now is to put that in, into practice and to see how we can actually change policy, change the way that things are being done. And so our work at the moment with UNEP um, and sort of the wider UN family really focuses on saying, well, we know this about environmental change. We know this about illegal resources. We know they can play a role in conflict. We know they have an important role to play in peace building. What do we do now? How do we put that into practice? And so what, what, we, what we do with, uh, with UNEP is to coordinate a group of experts that helps to advise the UN family on ways that it should um, do conflict prevention, post-conflict reconstruction, peacekeeping, peace negotiations and peace building more effectively. Answering or trying to address questions as how should they take uh, illegal resources, natural resources into account in peacekeeping mandates? How can you make sure that you take, in, take environmental impacts of peace building into account? Mm -hmm. How can you make um, peace negotiations more effective? How do you deal with issues like water, like land, like uh, timber and so on? And so we have a whole range of projects that, that try and address those issues um, and try and encourage the UN to take on environmental issues more effectively. Mm -hmm. And are, are you finding with, with that climate change has come up in, in focus and do you see any, um, what, well, what are the challenges of balancing climate change conflict security questions with some of the natural resources and conflict questions that you've worked on for, for even longer? No, that, that's, a, that's exactly it. I mean, I think climate change seems to be eclipsing all other environmental security issues, but those issues haven't gone away. Um, you know, there's, there's still problems with legal timber, there's still problems with mining, there's still problems with diamonds, there's still problems over land. Uh, water and so on, and you know, climate change encompasses a lot of those issues and can make some of them more, more difficult and more and more pressing. But I mean, a lot of our work is still focusing on on those other environmental security issues. So, for example, we're doing some work um, with uh, with uh, the monarch peacekeepers in the Democratic Republic of Congo to think about how they can deal with um, the trade in illegal resources more effectively. They've had their mandate expanded. So they, they now have a, a sort of responsibility to, to try and interdict natural resources um, where they're playing a role in conflict, but it's, it's difficult to know how to go about that. How do you deal with the bushmeat trade? How do you deal with the trade in coltan? How do you deal with the, the trade in charcoal? Um, and so we're looking at, at really practical ways for how peacekeepers, um, which is after all a single, single, one of the single biggest military deployments around the world, how they can deal with environmental and natural resource issues more effectively. So that means not just about monitoring sanctions, but also um, about their own environmental footprint. And then also about um, how do you deal with environmental and natural resource issues in uh, you know, disarmament, demobilization and reintegration programs. And then also things like provincial reconstruction teams that are starting that process of, of peace building, peacemaking, um, and trying to, trying to set the conditions for a more sustainable peace uh, so that you know, sustainable development can actually start. Well, it certainly sounds like a full agenda, uh, in part because the issues obviously present uh, a lot of dimensions and uh, taking it from the academic and the analytical to the field is, 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 a, is a lot of work. Well, we, we at the Wilson Center certainly enjoy working closely with ISD and we'll continue to look for you and ISD and UNEP for your leadership in helping us all figure out these issues. Thank you. Thanks.